The events took place in Yunlu District, Dunhai City. Everyone listened attentively to Dr. Phone. he explained that the younger sister had contracted a virus, so she couldn't wake up, Hu Zi, a famous Western doctor, was standing next to him. Fong was enraged when Hu Zi expressed doubts about Chinese medicine, calling it pseudoscience and quackery, Fong offered to send the younger sister to his hospital for a full diagnosis. Yang Ding, a representative of the Dingxin Group's board of directors, is outraged that the two experts have been arguing for so long without finding a cure. A young boy stepped confidently into the room. Moving closer, he looked around at the people present and stopped his gaze on Yen Dain, wondering what he was doing here. Not allowing the guy to introduce himself, the two guards pounced on him with fists. To which the guy calmly replied, his name is Fong, surname Lu, he looked at the guards with interest, he added, they can call him handsome brother. Yang Ding pensively watched the guy who entered, he had heard the name Lu Feng before, but how did he know him? Yang Ding's facial expression changed when he remembered who Lu Feng was, he hurriedly called out to the guards and ordered them to stop, loudly repeating not to attack the guy. The guards attacked the young lad with excitement in their eyes, the first of them clenched his teeth and uttered a threatening phrase about the proper way to invade someone else's home. Lu Feng adopted a fighting stance and was ready to defend himself, loudly so that the attackers could hear, he said that he would teach them a lesson for their rudeness with the guest. Dodging the blows, Lu Feng seemed to be playing with them, his speed and skill amazed those who were watching him. The stunned guards couldn't move, unable to control their bodies, panic gripped them, what has he done to us? Tiredly, covering his face with his hand, Yen Ding exhaled heavily, he turned to his guards in a guilty voice, saying that he had ordered them to stop. Lu Feng stretched out on the sofa, he said that he was just stretching out after a hard journey, as he finished, he glanced at the immobilized guards and added that he had hit their acupuncture points. After introducing himself, Yang Ding asked Lu Feng if Senior Lu Jing Lung had sent him here. Lu Feng confirming nodded to his interlocutor, that was correct, he was sent here by Sigu, Uncle Sigu had warned Feng that the person he would protect was in danger. Rising to his feet, Feng confidently said that he was the best at doing two things, killing people and saving people, Lu Feng turned to Yang Ding, asking him to show him the patient. Chairman Feng said that junior sister Yang's condition is serious, then how can he let Lu Feng diagnose her? Hu Zi supported the chairman, emphasizing that everything was correct, he asked everyone present what they would do if the younger sister's condition worsened. Lu Feng intervened in the conversation, claiming that he was willing to save anyone. Feng nervously approached the guy, threatening him. Lu Feng smiled, and pointed at the immobilized guards with his hand, he asked the famous doctors if they knew how to fix acupuncture points. The men were silent. He asked again, asking if they didn't know. The guy smiled wider and continued, claiming that he knew how to do it, and this situation proved that his skills were better than theirs. Drawing the attention of everyone present, he waved his hand, the observers saw the many needles Fong was holding. Fong found it hard to find the words, today, he not only saw an acupuncture technique that was unfamiliar to him, but also long-lost divine needles. An excited Hu Ji turned to Chairman Fong, asking him what kind of needles they were, is there something special about them? Eight-inch divine needles, Fong repeated, wisdom appeared in his voice, and he took up the story. Usually, acupuncture uses needles that are an inch or two, at most three inches long, only the best masters can use larger needles, the size of the needles indicates the skill level of the practitioner, eight-inch divine needles, lost long ago, are used for soul acupuncture. After taking a closer look at Lu Feng, Chairman Feng said that this young man could not be an ordinary person as he possessed eight-inch divine needles. Lu Feng examined the girl, measured her pulse, and realized that she had been poisoned with sleeping poison for nine days, this was something no ordinary doctor would be able to treat, after determining the location for the needle puncture, he inserted it into the girl's neck. The first needle passed the acupuncture point with ease. It was followed by the next needles. Hu Zi turned to Chairman Fong, asking him if he even realized what this guy was doing. He's not going to hurt his little sister, is he? Fong looked at Hu Zi strangely, he was annoyed with him, in an instructive tone, like a teacher in school, he asked, what does he know? These words were, he who prolongs life will seal death, Lu Fong hovered over his younger sister, his eyes lit up with fire and his movements seemed magical. Wiping the sweat from his forehead Lu Feng realized that he had already completed the complicated procedure. Contacted Yang Ding, he said that he had normalized her condition, 
and he discussed the details with the girl's father, Ang Ding listened attentively, frightened by the thought that his daughter might have gotten worse. Yang Ding's eyes became round, worriedly said that today was the eighth day, quietly, he continued that his daughter then. Lu Feng interrupted him, explaining that he had closed the girl's vital points to normalize her condition, the guy glanced at little sister Yang and added that further treatment might bring some discomfort. Yen Ding didn't care, he interrupted him, the man embarrassedly asked for help, he said he realized that she couldn't be cured by conventional methods. All right then, Lu Feng replied, approaching the girl. Meanwhile, Feng and Hu Zi watched Lu Feng's actions, Chairman Feng adjusted his glasses and looked more closely at the action, he was eagerly waiting for it to begin. I'm starting, Lu Feng said, the needles on the girl's body were getting bigger and bigger. She has large breasts, she will constantly move around during the treatment, I am afraid that I may accidentally make a mistake during the needle puncture, Lu Feng said, not noticing that he did not take his eyes off the girl's breasts. With the speed of wind, Lu Feng swung his palm between the girl's breasts. The blow was light and precise, with his other hand, he was preparing to make a needle puncture at the allotted point. Yen Ding opened his mouth, irritably pushing the air away, mentally, he slapped Lu Feng, his mind reverberated, what is he letting himself do? Without taking his gaze away from his chest, Lu Feng's life-saving thoughts were only about them, what is he only thinking about, focusing on the treatment he continued. The needle entered the girl with magical speed. It took only a moment to pass the needle through the heart muscle and equalize, this is extraordinary, he is a true master, exclaimed a stunned Fong. Meanwhile, the younger sister was sleeping sweetly in her bed, everyone could hear her snoring. Lu Feng exhaled a sigh of relief, he had finished his work. Guy offered to prepare clean clothes for little sister Yang, as she would need them soon. Lu Feng felt a fixed gaze, looking back towards the window, he saw a man in a tree, it was a sniper, he took aim at the guy's head, the guy felt that things were not good. Sniper aimed more accurately now, saying to himself in a voice, foolish boy, prepare to die. He was ready to pull the trigger, for the laser was clearly aimed at Lu Feng's head. A shot rang out, it all happened very quickly. Everything happened quickly, the bullet flew at Lu Feng, flying through the window, leaving behind the ringing sound of a broken window. Shards of glass lay on the floor, and a drop of blood glistened between them, was someone hurt? Fear gripped everyone present, and there were shouts from the servants. Was it an M4 sniper rifle? Stupid sniper, how dare you shoot at me? Shouted Lu Feng, Feng managed to dodge the bullet, he was only slightly hit. The sniper was shocked, he realized this kid wasn't easy, he better back off, the striker added. Lu Feng didn't let the sniper recover, jumping off the balcony and down the roof, he was next to the man. Yang Ding's voice came from the balcony, he worriedly shouted to brother Lu, be careful. Meanwhile, the younger sister woke up, wiping her eyes, she called out to her father. Hearing his daughter's voice, the anxious yet overjoyed father trembled. Forgetting his recent worries, he hugged Wen Wen and said that everything was fixed thanks to Dr. Lu, he was moved to tears, the girl asked him to calm down, because his tears got on her hand. There was a thunderstorm outside, heavy rain falling, footsteps were heard along the park. Lu Feng pursued the sniper through the dense thickets. Lu being the faster one, approached the fugitive with ease, he shouted to his back, is he trying to escape me? The sniper didn't stand a chance, it wouldn't work. Lu Feng shouted for him to lie down, the divine needle flew after the sniper. Falling face down on the ground, he felt paralysis sweep over his body. Lu Feng pressed the sniper's foot to the ground while holding his weapon, Lu Feng noted that he did not care whether the sniper wanted to get rid of Yang Ding or Yang Shirwen, however, if the sniper targeted him, he would only find his death, emphasizing this with a glance at the weapon. Swinging around, he struck the man, knocking out his tooth, he heard a low groan in response. Lu Feng knelt down, bringing his weapon closer to the man's face and keeping his finger on the trigger, he asked the attacker's name and the name of the target he was after, the man immediately told him, asking not to be touched, the man's name is Pu Jin Shu. It turned out that he was hired by a man he calls boss, the purpose was to get rid of the Yang family's doctor, he explained that when Junior Miss Yang died of an illness, the Yang family would be in chaos and boss would be able to take control of the Yang family. Lu Feng laughed loudly, saying that his boss had a pretty good idea, the guy even wondered who he was. The attacker said he doesn't know who hired him, he's only a lone assassin, but he has a way to contact the boss. At the same time, 
the attacker's phone rang, Lu Feng took the phone out of his pocket and looked at who was calling, it was him, the person who hired the hitman, the guy would just be able to find out who was behind all this. The man on the other side of the phone wondered why Pu Jin Shu was taking so long to get in touch. Lu Feng crouched on the hitman's back and began to introduce the assailant himself in conversation, he apologized, claiming that there was a problem with the assignment and Pu was hurt and if he wanted to continue his work, he needed to add some money. The boss promised to triple the commission in three days if Pu Jin Shu killed all three doctors who could cure her illness, the commission would be transferred within three days. Lu Feng wondered if the boss knows that Yang Wen will die tomorrow but wants the hitman to stay for another three days, it looks like he is still up to something else. Lu Feng didn't have time to reply something before the boss hung up the phone. The guy aimed the weapon at his attacker, apologizing and saying that he was useless to him, with a crazed look, the killer also apologized, repeating that he didn't want to die. Thunder rumbled in the skies the weather was deteriorating, it was about to start raining. Lu Feng returned to the house, he was greeted by the kind maids and the grateful Yang Ding. Yang Ding noticed that Lu Feng had returned quickly, and asked him if he had succeeded in catching the attacker. Lu Feng nodded, confirming, the attacker would not be disturbed again, he asked Brother Yang to send one of his men to clean up the area where the assassin was lying. Ian Dean asked if the guy knew who was behind it. The maid smiling sweetly, he asked his brother if he was sure he wanted to talk about it here. The chairman nodded and invited him to go to his office for further conversation, Lu Feng thanked him for the tea and followed Brother Yang into the study under the stairs of the maids. The rain had not stopped falling and there was no more thunderstorms. Inviting him into his office, Yen Ding motioned for him to take a seat. He turned to Lu Feng, saying that his daughter still had a needle in her body, and could DR, Lu Gai interrupt Brother Yang, calming the man down, he didn't need to worry about the 8-inch needle in Wen Wen's body. Explaining that this needle was created from golden grass, and by now it should have dissolved into her body without any problems. Your medicine is extraordinary, Yang Ding said, he was eternally grateful for everything. Lu Feng stopped the man, saying that there was no need to thank him, and offered to talk about the family's problems, Yang Ding agreed, he is willing to tell everything. Starting with their Dingxian group acquiring a piece of land in the Arab region, originally intended for a tourism project. When he was inspecting the site, he saw a large location of oil underground, which is a treasure that any country would want to fight for, one of his partners predicted that he would become the richest tycoon. But the happy days didn't last long, after a few days of wells, many different powerful forces, which he could not even touch, came to him. Telling the story, he was overwhelmed with anger, he waved his hand and proudly said that he was Yang Ding, a Chinese, how could he hand over his real estate to foreigners so easily? Yang Ding explained that because of the strong resistance, all these forces were targeting his family, and that was why he had hired so many guards for Wen Wen's safety. Xiao Feng gave Brother Yang a friendly wink and said that he would help solve the problem so that everything would end faster and Yang himself could continue his journey. Dong replied that he was handling his own affairs for the time being, he continued that this time he was invited here to protect Yang Wen. Yang Wen once received a prediction from a famous messenger that she wouldn't be able to live for more than 20 years due to illness, Yang Ding didn't believe those words before, but this year was her 20th birthday, and things didn't go as he had hoped. Lu Feng agreed, explaining that if he couldn't help him, what did he plan to do with foreigners? After finishing his conversation, Xiao Feng walked out of the study and headed to his room, he met the maids and they said hello politely while smiling. Brother Yang told him to stay in the room next to Sherwen to protect her if necessary, apparently, her room is next door, Lu Feng thought. Someone was heard tapping on the door. The boy turned, alerted by that knock. He heard her voice, Sherwen was standing in a single towel, calling out for a maid to help her, Xiao Feng stood back at first, but unable to bear his curiosity, he unceremoniously turned around. For a few seconds they were just silent, looking at each other. Lu Feng's appraising gaze slid over the girl's body, stopping at her breasts, not knowing what to say, he decided to compliment her figure. When Wen flared up with anger, she hit Lu Feng several times with the towel, he took the blows without objecting. Sis Yang expressed her gratitude for saving her life, but at the same time expressed her displeasure that he had touched her breasts in public and that she would not forgive him, the guy tried to explain that it was unintentional. He tried, but Wen Wen was angry, twisting the towel in her hands, she said to him, it's a pity it's only a towel. The girl had already turned around to leave, 
a wry smile playing on her face, she thought about finding someone who could tame this overly proud guy. To think, he would have to protect her for the next six months, Xiao Feng hypnotized the girl's body as he watched her leave him. It happened so fast that the guy didn't realize how it happened, his hand caught on the towel that covered Sherwin's body. The towel fell to the floor. She was standing completely naked, meanwhile, Lu Feng was struggling with his desire, when Wen's cheeks lit up, she felt embarrassed. An accident, he repeated to himself, of course it was an accident, Lu tried to justify himself, mentally addressing the girl, if he told her it was an accident, would she believe him? The young family's house and only enthusiastic sounds broke the silence of the night. The clock relentlessly counted down fifteen minutes. An angry and already dressed girl walked out of the room, heading towards Lu Feng's room in a threatening manner, the girl shouted and swung a pillow. The guy took off his shirt, not expecting Shivan to fly in without knocking, why did she keep screaming in his room? Feng had warned that if she continued, he would do something about it. The girl didn't let him finish, throwing a toy at him, followed by a pillow, she shouted that if he tried to do anything to her, he'd see what would happen. The guy caught the pillow holding it in his hands and it seemed strange to him. Without much effort, he tore it open. The feathers that filled the pillow flew all over the room, falling on both of their heads. Shai looked the guy in the eye with defiance, telling him that if he did anything to her, his dad would kick him out. Lu Feng put his index finger to his lips, gesturing for silence, holding out his palm to the girl, there was a pillow bug in it that was listening in on their conversation. With interest, Wen Wen watched Lu Feng typing a message on her phone. He turned the phone around to the girl so she could read the message, it said they were being bugged and she didn't need to give the appearance and keep yelling at her to stop the other party from harassing her that they'd found the bug. The girl answered him that he was the one who allowed the shooting in her room, she also typed a message asking if it was another killer. Are she and her father in danger? Lu Feng wrote back that for at least the next six months, she would be fine since he would be by her side. Shivers took to snatching the phone out of his hands. When his phone was in her hands, she tossed it haughtily aside, the boy watched the action wide-eyed. Sherman stood in front of Lu Feng, looking down at him, said that there were some things he needed to understand since he was her guard, she will explain to him the duties he has to fulfill. The bewildered guy twisted his head, asking what the hell. The girl added that he should obey all her orders and should not enter her room without knocking, meanwhile, the boy covered his ears with his fingers, signaling that he was not going to listen to her. Looking to leave the room, he advised her to stop talking and go to bed. Lu Feng pushed the girl out of his room, she didn't resist but continued to scream, whether or not she would go to bed was none of his business, why was he pushing her if she wasn't done yet? Lu stood waiting for a moment for the girl to cool down, he said he would give the girl 100 bucks as compensation for the loss of the bath towel, but later because he didn't have a wallet, and added that Miss Yang could withdraw that money from his paycheck. Smiling, Lu Feng closed the door in front of Sherwin's nose. The door banged loudly and the girl was left alone. Fury loomed in Shivan's mind, what had he said? Compensation. Does he think he can pay it off with money? Feng thought the girl was really cute when she fights. He examined the bug, then continued with the thought that if this wiretap was installed by another assassin, then he should already know that Feng had cured Yang Sherwen. They had found out what they wanted, so this bug was already useless, Lu Feng cracked it open with his fingers. He was no longer bugged, because of the noise, the people who installed the bug took off their headphones, they knew for sure that Yang Wen had recovered and hurriedly informed the boss. Meanwhile, Sherwen lay in her bed and wrote a message to her sister, the girl complained that a guy was bullying her, and they had to find a way to punish him. A sly smile appeared on her face, quietly laughing, she whispered, let Lu Feng wait, he would soon pay for everything. Morning everyone from the Yang family house discussed Dr. Lu's skills, saying that he is indeed a worthy disciple of the great master, his knowledge is astonishing. In the kitchen, Yang Ding and Lu were having breakfast, Lu talked about himself, saying that he was the third among the best students, Yang's chairman listened attentively to his interlocutor. Sherwin came down to them from the room, when she saw Lu Feng, she rolled her eyes and said that she finally saw who it was that had been showing off since morning, the girl turned to Lu in an orderly tone, demanding to get her into the university. Her father admonished her for being rude to Xiao Feng, Sherwin turned away from Feng without saying a word. Yang Ding apologized for his daughter, saying that her mother had died long ago and it was his fault that he dissolved her, Feng nodded and asked brother Yang, 
perhaps he was afraid that the guy wouldn't be able to handle her. Sherwin extended her hand to Lou, handing him his university admission document and car keys. This is really too much for the richest man in Dunhai City, an admission message to the famous Dunhai University, Lou thought as he read the documents. Lou and Sherwin went to the university by car. She was silent the whole way, glancing at the boy from time to time, she wondered how he had dared to take advantage of her while she slept, let him wait for revenge. Two cars overtook them on the road, blocking their passage. A big guy and a girl got out of the cars, they walked around the car, examining the driver, the unfamiliar guy noticed that Lou was so arrogant that he didn't get out of the car. The girl suggested that Lou phone get out of the car and tell her his height and weight. Lou winked at the stranger and attacked her curiosity, saying that he was 1, 8 meters tall and weighed 70 kilograms, about the other, he asked if she wanted to see for herself. She didn't expect such an answer, instantly giving Fun a murderous stare. Fun smoothly shifted his gaze to the big guy, saying that he was guarding Miss Young, not him, but what did it matter to him that the guy was arrogant? The big guy clenched his teeth and fists, he would have definitely hit him, but Sherwin had warned that Lu Fong had beaten up two young family guards with one punch. Unable to listen to Lu's disdain anymore, Sherwin poked her head out of the car, turning to look at her friends, the tall big guy is Tong Lei, Xiao Shi is the sister, Sherwin asked to help teach this Lu Fong good manners. Tong Lei asked Lu if he had the courage to have a race with him, the loser will serve the winner. Fong looked at Tong in surprise, turned to Sherwin, does her friend have masochistic tendencies? Lu leaned in close to the girl's face so close that she could feel his breath, he said that he would agree to this since M.S. Yang wanted to test him, in response, the girl showed him her tongue. They will start from Lu Shan Villa, move to the Ring Road and then head to the university, whoever arrives first will win. The cars made a dash, they started the race. Tong Lei was in front of everyone, sticking out his fist, pointing his thumb downwards. Sherwin praised Tong, saying that he has been driving since he was 13 years old, and now he is very popular as the mountain god of the roads of Dunhai City, she added that Fong could never beat him. Laughing, Lu Fong turned to Sister Yang, saying that she was still very young, so she had a limited mind. Lu, pressing the gas pedal, the guy turned the steering wheel sharply to the side, putting the car on its side wheels, and in a moment his car was first. Tong Lei shouted that this guy is crazy, he wants to roll over. Xiao Shi opened her mouth in surprise, how did he do that? They'll roll over, they'll definitely roll over. Holding her head, Shivan repeated. The girl's voice became hysterical, yelling for the guy to stop because there was a red light ahead. But Lu managed to pass at the last second of the yellow, he said it was pretty easy, Xiao Si and Tong slowed down. The men in the car across the street were spectators of the race, the surprised men saw a handsome young guy driving the car, one of them said that if this guy wanted to show his skills, he would end up badly. Danube University of Science and Technology Arriving at the finish line first, Lu got out of the car and sat down on the hood of the car, staggering, Sherwin slowly got out of the car and sat down after taking a few steps. After parking their cars, Xiao and Tong hurried over to Lu, their eyes were still filled with astonishment. Tong was smiling, but his movements gave away his anxiety, Lu saw this and asked the guy if he was ready to pay the bet. Tong and Xiao worriedly looked at each other, they looked at Sherwin with eyes full of regret. Lu gave advice to the young people not to get depressed and not to feel embarrassed about their losing bet. He also added that if they called him Big Brother, they would not need to honor the terms of the bet. Sherwin looked at Lu in surprise, saying that she wasn't the one who took part in the argument, but her friend suggested it, therefore, she had nothing to do with it. Everyone was still surprised. Lu Fong quietly turned to Sherwin, saying that escaping from a burning house with many people and closing the door behind him was a great idea, Sherwin tiredly exhaled, avoiding his gaze. A car pulled up to them. A big guy came out of it, he asked Lu Fong who allowed him to park his car here, and didn't he know that this parking space was already taken? From the school's university compound, students were watching, someone said fearfully, that's Fang's brother, Sun Ching Fong. Lu walked closer to the guy, he stood across from him and looked at his face with indifference, and asked if the big guy had a problem and where did this aggression even come from. The audience watched and discussed Lu in shock. Sun Ching Fong lowered his glasses, irritated through his teeth, and turned to Lu, or does he only want to please others? Ching Fong saw Sherwin standing next to him, and his gaze slid over her figure, he mentally remarked that this little beauty really had a beautiful figure. The girl felt the stare and cringed, she felt uncomfortable. Ching Fong turned to her, 
introduced himself as Sun Ching Feng and asked if she was new here, because he didn't recognize him, he also added that she could be called Brother Feng. Lu Feng intervened in the conversation and said that he was not interested in knowing who Ching Feng was, and this parking space now belonged to him. Lu stepped forward and shielded the girl from Ching Feng's gaze. He also advised the big guy not to spend much time in front of the mirror and to take care of his eyes. Sherwin smiled and felt Lu's pleasant reaction. The students continued to discuss Lu, and some of them were already debating whether Fun would beat the daredevil. Ching Feng tensely clenched his fist and asked if Lu wanted to disappear. Lu dodges a punch combination, and countered with a kick to Ching Feng's leg. A fist flew past the guy, Ching Feng went down. Brother Lu struck another blow and this one was more painful. Chinfen flew some distance away, away from Fun and his friends. 25 he was able to send him into the air with one punch, he's really very strong. Big Chinfen collapsed on the hood of his car and felt a little exhausted, he threw up. Lu made his way out to the car where Ching Feng was lying and said with a victorious smile that there was now only one Feng brother in the university, and that was Lu Feng, it was very impressive, and the students took pictures of the scene and posted the pictures on the university forum. Lu jumped off the car with pride on his face. He stopped next to Sherwin. He tilted his head politely in her direction, offering to go to the university together, they should report back to the school, the girl agreed without objection. Xiao Shi whispered in Tong Lei's ear, had he ever seen Miss Yang so submissive? Sherwin had tried to subdue Lu Feng, but instead, she herself had become subdued to him. Tong tensed up and told Lu Feng that he was true to his word, so Lu would be his boss from now on, if he called, Tong would arrive instantly. Lu replied that he would let Tong be his own driver. Xiao Shi laughed, and Tong silently accepted this decision. From behind Tong the Ching Feng asked how Lu Feng dared to attack him, he prepared to stand up to answer. Tong Lei heard his intent and kicked Ching Feng in the face. The students watched Tong beat up Ching Feng and were amazed that this was the second person to beat up Brother Feng today. Some students pointed out that they had heard of the Song family from eastern China, they are known as the strongest family in the sea, and that might not be true. The students, after seeing how easily Ching Feng was beaten today, they knew it was a lie. Tong felt better because there was complete silence. In half an hour, Lu and Sherwin were returning from the mall, and Lu was carrying bags of his purchases. Tong approached Lu Feng and asked if his boss wanted to go to town and have a few drinks. The guy accepted the offer and said he rarely gets invited, so he rarely says no. They arrived at the Dongshan International Hotel. At the entrance, they were greeted by the workers welcoming young Master Lei, one of them asked Tong Lei if he would like to take the small hall today or prepare an exclusive hall for him. Of course, Tong chose an exclusive hall. Tong told Lu Feng that there is a Roman hall on the third floor, which is his exclusive hall, and a season ticket costs more than 300,000 yuan a year. Lu Feng laughed and asked, 300,000 yuan a year. Tong nodded his head and asked, is it too expensive for the boss? Lu Feng replied that 300,000 yuan was not expensive at all, but one bottle of wine for 300,000 would not be enough for him, he advised Tong to learn to save money in the future because all his money was provided by his parents. After a short discussion, Tong and Lu agreed and decided that frugality was important, Tong asked not to be considered stupid just because of his frugality, and Lu Feng agreed not to discuss the topic further. Tong was overjoyed and had wanted a drink for a long time, he was smiling sincerely and the goal was to get Lu drunk enough to make him vomit. Lu promised to call whoever out drinks him boss. Here they are in the hall, the servants invite them to sit down. The maid brought a menu and asked Tong Lei what he would like to order. He chose dish number four, Joyful Xiao said she really liked the abalone with sea cucumbers, it was delicious. Tong smiled at Xiao and asked him to bring everything. Sherwin suggested that everyone just order what they wanted, she looked at Xiao and Tong and asked what they were thinking, ordering so much extra food. Tong turned to Sherwen, asking why she should feel uncomfortable if he invited everyone over for dinner, especially since her family is the richest on China's east coast. A maid came over and questioned Tong Lei if he really wanted to order that much food since the amount of portions for four people was very large, Tong confirmed his decision. Lu Feng cast a thoughtful glance at Tong. Tong handed the menu to Lu Feng and asked what he wanted to drink. Lu pointed out that you can't drink beer along with seafood, as it can cause diarrhea and the entire lunch you ordered will go to waste. Tong offered to take two bottles of Mao Tai wine. But Lu said that two bottles of wine wouldn't be enough and they needed a whole case, 
Sherwin nervously turned her head. Xiao Si and Tong were fascinated and surprised when Lu asked about the case of wine. Lu put his hand on Tong Lei's shoulder and asked if he had entered the Capital Military University, and reminded him that soldiers should not retreat in the face of fear. Tong, dazed, called out to the waiter, and told him to bring a case of wine. Tong then raised the wine glass and turned to Lu Feng, expressing his admiration despite their recent conflict. He raised the cup as a sign of respect. Xiao Shi continued to enjoy her favorite abalone and suggested that Tong drink a few more cups of wine to relax. After the first bowl of wine, Lu Feng looked more cheerful, and Sherwen looked at him with displeasure. Tong decided to eat quickly before getting drunk, without finishing the first bowl, he reached for the food with his chopsticks. No sooner had he put the abalone in his mouth than Tong's hand was caught by Lu, he offered the boy a drink with him before he ate before he ate. So they had another drink each. Many glasses later, Tong found it hard to stand on his feet, but he held the glass tightly, Fong, on the other hand, felt quite free. Xiao told Sherwen that her guard was good at drinking, in response, the girl only waved her hands and exhaled heavily. Tong Lei couldn't stay on his feet and fell down, Lu laughingly asked the lying guy if he could drink another glass. But the boy could not answer, for he had fallen asleep. Sherwin noticed that Lu was very ruthless towards Tonga. Lu answered her with a mouthful of food, if he didn't get him drunk to the point of insanity, how would he be able to eat it all by himself? Xiao Shi also watched the guy eating the expensive food, she thought about it and turned to Sherwin, even if her family is the richest in the China Sea, it would be hard to keep him for long, right? Shivan leaned toward the girl, asking if she wanted to take it for herself. Xiao crossed her arms, making it clear that she was refusing since she wasn't as rich as Sherwin. Abruptly the door opened, someone came in. There were three men walking, two thugs behind them, and Chinfen in front, he said he was going to beat them up and sent his guards inside the hall. No sooner had he entered the hall than a bottle flew at his head, knocking his glasses off. The guy covered his cheek with his palm, and upon realizing it was Lu, he grimaced. Lu held two more bottles in his hand, tossing them up, saying he didn't understand how his brains could allow him to come here today. Lu Feng looked at the three men without curiosity, making it clear that they were no threat to him. He turned to Ching Feng, saying that there were ladies present, so he wasn't going to hit him now. The men looked at each other, they were afraid of Lu Feng. One of them said they would leave immediately, the other guard said to leave slowly because the boss was hurt, they left the hall. Lu saw that Sherwin was scared, so he told her not to be afraid because he had solved all the problems. The girl asked nervously, why should she be afraid? Lu Feng smiled, saying that everything was fine and they should already go back home. Throwing his little brother on his back, he said he was taking him home, Tong sleepily said he was dreaming, in the dream someone came to him to solve his problems and he wanted to fight him. Lu covered his eyes and replied affectionately that once Tong had dealt with them there in his sleep, he could continue sleeping. In the car, Sherwin was paying attention to the fact that Lu was quite handsome, as well as easy to deal with any problems. In the mirror, the guy saw the girl watching him. He asked, just now, was she considering him? She replied that of course not, why would she do that? A new message came on Lu's cell phone, and he looked up from his phone. The guy approached Xiao Shi, asking her to get Tong Lei into his house, the girl agreed. Lu walked Tong to the girl's car and said goodbye. Before getting into the car to Sherwen, he took his cell phone out of his pocket and stepped aside, the girl asked where he went. He replied that he had something he needed to take care of and would be back soon. At the same time, Xiao Feng's house. Xiao Feng thought about Lu Feng while nervously clenching his fist, he was receiving medical attention, his uncle asked, who dared to humiliate him like that? The guy said, this freak, his name is Lu Feng, He's a freshman at Dunhai University, he asked his uncle Yang to avenge him. Uncle Yen promised that Lu Feng wouldn't even live for three days, the man became angry and arched his eyebrows. Xiao Feng mentally turned to Lu, his uncle is a martial arts master, Lu Feng is a good fighter too, let's see how tough you are. Lu receives a message from the boss saying that he has received a triple reward, now his goal is to protect Yang Shirwen and the man who cured her illness. An ironic thought rolled through the guy's mind that he had just been paid to get rid of himself, wasn't that very easy money for him? Shirwen appeared out of nowhere, holding the branch she had been hiding behind all this time, Lu was startled, but he said hello to the girl. She asked the guard, wasn't it negligent of him to leave her alone in the car? The girl smiled in a friendly way, winked one eye at the guy, 
and said that she forgave him, Lu thanked and smiled gratefully. What was that thing in his hands? she asked. It was difficult for him to explain. He connected the app to his phone. Sherwin knew what it was, its decoding software used by the secret services. Sherwin turned back to Lu, she suggested catching the person behind the killer, they should be questioned, why is he against them? Lu agreed and told her to follow him, the girl assumed he was an unusual person since he had spy equipment. She realized that if her dad had asked such a man to guard her, the family was in danger. Lu stopped, turning around to the girl, putting his hand on her head and stroking her, he said the girl was safe under his care. Her cheeks browned, a little calmer, what about the father? The girl asked. Lu replied that he would only protect her, Sherwin punched him in the chest several times and called him a bastard, demanding that he tell her what happened to her family today. A message came on his phone, Lu waved the girl with the phone. He warned the girl that if she continued to cause trouble, they wouldn't have a chance to catch anyone. They went to the car, Lu phone even managed to track down where the customer's phone was now. Lu said that he once borrowed the program from the CIA, the girl asked who he was. He continued that after the program fell into his hands, he asked his men to improve and update the software, Sherwin interjected, his people. They reached the car. The girl got behind the wheel and motioned for Brother Lu to sit next to her, she would drive him. He silently took her in his arms and carried her to the seat next to him, the girl did not try to protest, but asked quietly, what is he doing? After driving in silence for a while, the girl asked where they were going. The guy replied that the girl shouldn't make up her mind, he would drive the car. He asked if she wanted to see something interesting and new, he's going to show her the harsh reality. Two hours after that, Love Hotel Zianhoen. They stood at the hotel reception desk, Lu Feng asked for a lover's room on the sixth floor, the receptionist suggested the room on the sixth floor at number 607, but Feng asked. The girl at the front desk apologized, but the guest had already checked into room 608, which was across the hall from their room, Lu hesitantly agreed, let it be. He turned to Sherwin, asking her to give him some money and he would make sure she was in heaven today, she interrogated if he wanted her to give him money. Stepping away from the reception, they continued to play their part, the girl touched Lu's chest and passionately said that she wanted him right there. The man behind the reception desk said it was good to be young. When the pair hid themselves out of sight, Sherwin demanded to explain normally, what were they doing here? Lu suggested to stay calm and listen to him since they were near their target. He showed the girl a phone that had the location turned on, the target was in the room the girl asked if they should break in and grab this man. They can do that, Lu said, but he wants to show her something fun. The girl's eyes lit up and she interjected, fun. They went to their room. Stopping under the door of room 608, Lu examined the door, the girl asked, is something wrong? He replied that everything was fine. Sherwin said that this person is in another room, so what are we waiting here for? Lu explained that there are many CCTV cameras throughout the hotel, and if they broke in directly, they wouldn't go unnoticed. He added that there was also a camera in front of room 608, then how will they get in? The girl asked. Lu laid out his plan. Every room in the hotel has a vent, and it's big enough for one person to fit through freely, so they decided to take action. Once above the next room, they heard two people talking. There was a young girl and a man lying on the bed, she told him that he was bad, the man laughingly asked if she would like it if he became good. The girl praised him, saying that brother Tian would soon become the richest man on the East China Sea. Meanwhile, an angry Sherwin pushed Fong, he couldn't help himself and fell into the couple's room. Keeping his balance, he landed on his feet, the couple watched the stranger fearfully. Behind Fun, Shivan jumped down from the ceiling. Lu caught her, she lunged at her husband with threats, calling him a bastard, she asked him if he believed in his plan, Lu watched the girl disapprovingly. An angry Tian shouted out, who are they? He tried to pounce on Lu, but the latter pushed him back with his foot. A worried Chidan jumped out of bed. Taking the knife, she stepped toward Sherwen, she asked, how dare they hit Tian's brother? Shivan stood still without moving. A moment later, Lu Feng stood in front of the girl. He caught his attacker's hand and held it with ease, he said, disinterested in using a knife with such a blunt blade against him. Then he answered Tian's question about who they were, he asked him, didn't he hire a hitman named Pu Jinshu to eliminate the Yang family? Tian realized who was in front of him. The guy introduced himself, he is from Sun family who was insulted by Lu, he said he could see that he was very capable, 
but he shouldn't have provoked the Song family. Lu replied that he didn't need to worry about provoking the Song family, and asked if it was his personal decision, or were Sun family members involved as well. Tian replied to him that although he was the master of the Song family martial hall, but this decision was his personal decision, Lu replied that he hoped he was telling the truth. Lu Feng asked him what he had come for, who was behind the scenes of all this. He replied that the foreign Gaojin group was involved, they give him money and he looks for people for them. Shirwen said she knows this group, it is a very big import and export group in Korea. Lu asked the girl if she knew her. Shirwen introduced herself, saying that she was Yang Ding's daughter, and of course she cared about what was happening in the market. Lu asked Tian who was giving him the money. Lu needed to know the person's name and status. Tian said that this man's name was Fei Daojia, and he was the general manager of the Gaoyan group, they had only met him once. Lu asked if anyone from his battle hall was involved in this case. The man answered him, no one else, he wouldn't dare to use the power of the battle hall. Lu Feng inquired who the chairman of the battle hall was. Does Tian have a picture of him? Tian slipped the phone to the guy, and said that among the martial arts, he was called Tiger Baihu. Lu scrutinized the face from the picture that was on his phone. Seven meanwhile, Tian and his girlfriend were smiling at Lu in a friendly way, the man turned to him, since he had told him everything he knew, could he let them go? Lu prepared two divine needles for them, laughingly asking if they thought it was possible. A short moment later, the pair were lying on the floor, Shivan screamed, had he really killed them? Lu calmly explained to the girl, he can't afford someone in front of his little sister, the guy just made them lose the memory of meeting them. The girl wondered, how was that even possible? Lu took her in his arms and tossed her up to the air vent, telling the girl to go back first, she agreed. Waiting in the ventilation passageway, Sherwin asked when he was done. If he's done, then let him come back. Lu Feng stood in the middle of the room as if listening to something, he replied that he needed a little more time. He picked up a chair and threw it at the closet with all his might. The chair broke. A guy in a mask came out. He aimed the gun at the guy. Shivan poked her head out into the room, asking Lu to be careful. Lu broke the criminal's arm and pressed the dagger against his throat. He admonished the masked guy that his movements were too slow for a killer. Frightened eyes watched Lu. Intercepting the weapon, examining it, said, This is a gold revolver, body length 23 centimeters, ammunition capacity 8 rounds, America Colt Anaconda, made in 1990, Lu shifted his gaze to the guy, asking if he was a representative of the Goyang group. He continued that they probably wanted to kidnap the man's girlfriend by obediently cooperating with them, ensuring that he wouldn't cause trouble. Lu broke his arm behind his back, hurting him, clarified that he asks the questions here and the guy in the mask answers, if the guy wants to live, he will be obedient. Brother Lu offered to talk about the real reason why the attackers were targeting the Yang family. In the room, Sherwin said that she did not expect, Aunt Ma would be a traitor, she always liked Yang Melon. Sherwin was upset, Feng added that this unlucky guy even told him how to contact Fei Daojia, therefore, Lu should discuss things with Sherwin's father. The guy continued talking while stroking Wen Wen's head, her father doesn't want her to be involved in this, the girl asked, why did the aunt do this to them? Lu was unable to answer that question. Shivan interjected, but who is going to deal with these people? Lu lay on the bed and told the girl not to worry, he would handle these things himself, she agreed and offered to go home. The next day, at the University of the Spirit, Sherwin and Lu went to class. The students looked at the couple and took pictures of them, they already knew who Brother Fong was. Sherwin remarked that Lu was the reason they were so highly regarded, the guy objected, saying that the students had probably come to look at the girl. A volleyball flew from the side of the sports court. He flew towards Sherwin, the girl was very frightened. Lu Feng restrained the ball with his hand, hiding the girl behind his back. She breathed a sigh of relief and said she almost didn't die of fright, the guy said she didn't need to worry, everything was under control. Two guys in sports uniforms approached them, one of them approached Lu and told him to give the ball back to his older brother. Lu gave the brave athletes a murderous look. He threw the ball behind his back, making it clear that he would not respond to their demand. One of the boys exclaimed, did he really dare throw the ball away? Lu Feng suggested that he should first come over and apologize to this beauty, with his hand he pointed at Sherwen. The athletes laughed, the big guy asked Lu if his head was okay. He suggested, Lu should apologize to the ball first. The guy cast a calm but cruel gaze at Lu Feng. Sherwen took his hand and told him to forget it and leave better. Already on his way back, 
Lu Feng was stopped by a big man who asked if he definitely wanted to leave. If so, he should ask Brother Du's permission first. Brother Du watched the boy and told him that he seemed to know his place. Lu picked the ball up off the grass with his foot. Du was going to say something, what are you? However, Brother Feng directed the ball to Du and made a pass right to his head. Lu Feng took the ball again. He launched it at the second guy, knocking out his tooth. Then grabbing the ball, he threw it at a third comrade. After hugging Wen Wen, he motioned for her to leave because it was time to go to class. Outside the battlefield lay the beaten students. One of them covered his mouth and asked the other, who plays basketball with a soccer ball anyway? Sherwin faced her gaze at Lu, and she realized that she could rely on him. At this time they were already at the lecture. While drawing animals, Lu Feng got tired and fell asleep on the desk with a pen in his hands. He felt someone touch his shoulder with a finger. Wiping his eyes, Feng saw a beautiful classmate. The girl handed him a note and said that a classmate sitting behind them asked him to give this to her. He read the note and Sherwin suggested we meet in the evening. Turning back to the girl, he let her know that everything was fine. Lu asked a classmate who was sitting next to her, what was her name? She replied, her name is Ping Jiechi, and asked what the guy's name was. Lu introduced himself, said she could call him pretty brother. The girl looked up at him and smiled softly. Behind them, Sherwin was seething with anger, meaning that the guy might get sick if he didn't rush to subdue the girl. The evening was not yet over, and the passions between them continued to grow. Walking back to the car, the girl suddenly asked, why doesn't the guy change his habit of talking to all the girls in a row? Lu replied that he had been busy over the years and student life had barely touched him, it was not bad for him to just socialize with students like that. Siobhan continued the topic by asking if he had ever relaxed before and what did he do then. Brother Foam replied that he had been a soldier since he was a child, and then. The girl added that he was so talented that he must have been special before, Foam talked about his past life. Up to a certain point, Sherwin listened to him attentively, suddenly, the girl turned to face him and placed her hands on his chest. Asked if this girl, Ping Jiechi thinks this girl is very beautiful. Lu felt a sudden stabbing sensation. Not far away, Chen Feng was watching from the car, he called his uncle Yang and asked when he would arrive, he warned him that he would follow Lu Feng now. Talking to uncle Yang, he asked his uncle if he would stay with them for a little while. He repeated that he would continue to watch them, and let his uncle take more men with him. The girl followed Lu and pushed him in the back, demanding him to tell the truth, what did he really think? Lu ignored the topic. Young family home, Lu was waiting under Sherwin's door, he asked her if she was ready yet. The girl left the room and stood in a lewd pose, Lu asked why she chose such a dress, she replied that she didn't look better in it than Ping Jiechi. Lu Feng nodded and said that definitely little sister Yang is the most beautiful, he gave her a hand, the girl accepted it. They went to his favorite bar that brother Lu had told him about. The night city was marvelous in its beauty and easy tranquility. They sat at the bar and talked, Sherwin said that she heard that each generation of heavenly sword has ten swords, then what is Lu Feng's sword among the ten most popular ancient swords of China? Lu replied that he is the Lu Nguyen sword. The girl's voice quivered and she suddenly looked at the guy, asking if he had killed someone. Lu replied that, yes, a lot of people, he continued savoring the red wine. Shivan turned away from him, faintly panicked, the boy didn't immediately understand the girl's reaction. He turned her chair so that the girl was looking him in the eye, their faces were too close together, Sherwin's cheeks were burning, Lu wondered if it scared her. From the expression on her face, it was obvious that Sherwin was thinking, right now her family was going through a big crisis. Fun suggested drinking wine and relaxing. The girl asked cryptically if he was trying to get her drunk. As a joke, the guy said he was going to get her drunk and kill her. Fun added for her not to look back as they were being watched by unknown people. After they left the bar, the men who had been watching the couple followed them. It was deep night in the city, the center of the city, they were racing down an empty street. While riding in the car, Fun suggested the girl get some sleep. He pulled out the gun he'd gotten yesterday and decided to get rid of his pursuers. Extending his arm out of the window, Feng aimed at the car coming from behind and fired a precision shot. He shot the car's tire with a clean shot. The terrified bandits tried to keep the car on the road, at high speed they could not be stopped. The pursuers were swept off the road and the car overturned. Lu Feng assured the girl that the men could no longer pursue them. A large car came out of the corner, Feng swerved sharply while applying the brakes. Men came out of the car, with Chin Fen's uncle between them. Fen also got out, 
telling the girl to stay in the car and close the door. Chingfeng's uncle said that he had already heard about the kid's fighting prowess, Lu Feng thanked for the praise and asked who was looking for him. The man replied that he would tell the name after the guy could wrestle his people. Two men jumped on the guy, yelling that they were going to beat him up. A scuffle broke out, hard to figure out who was hitting who. Lu Feng defeated a few people, he praised them, but said, they were nothing. Dong Xiu came out to the guy, he is the head of the Sun Fighting Hall, he said he would avenge Chen Feng. Like a wild animal, he jumped at Lu Feng. Lu said that out of respect, he would accompany the elder Dong Sui in the duel. Feng decided to influence the development himself and struck the first blow. The guy punched him in the face, knocking the old man's tooth out with a slight movement. Dong Xiu shouted threateningly that he would kill him, but his threats had nothing to do with reality. Lu Feng got tired of playing with him, so he hit harder. Dong Xiu realized that he had lost the fight this time. He apologized to Lu Feng, saying that he was wrong. Feng told the old man to go back and warn everyone not to dare to disturb the young family. The boy asked the men from the Sun family, who were afraid to attack him, did they like the play? Realizing that Lu Feng had seen them, the men fled. When Lu Feng and Sherwen were driving home, he asked if the girl was scared, she replied that she wasn't. Sherwin sincerely expressed her gratitude to Fong. Students gathered outside the university in the military training square, they were commanded by a military instructor. The students and female students stood straight and at attention, their eyes were fixed on the commander, he first commanded to the right and then at attention. The guy looked at the girl named Ping Jiechi, he thought she was really pretty, he thought her breasts were the same size as Sherwin's. Jiechi told the guy to stay focused, the military training for beginners is very strict, the boy replied that military training was in his blood. One of the instructors threateningly asked the protagonist how he dared to talk during military training, the commander threatened him that he would give him a big red zero on the subject and ordered him to get the hell out of here. Lu Feng said competently that a military instructor orders to get out of formation instead of telling him how to do it, he asked the commander to show him how to carry out the order to roll. Such an interesting answer amused everyone around him, the girls laughed shrilly. The commander called the guy's name and told him to get out, he told the others to get information, the protagonist asked how the commander knew his name if he hadn't even checked the group yet, he made up the assumption that someone had asked the instructor to come and deliberately target him. The instructor said bluntly that he could have nothing against the average average student. In the distance, school bullies who had been beaten up by Lu Feng earlier were watching the commander, one of them called the instructor a fool. Another military instructor here said that what just happened was a misunderstanding, there was no need to pay any more attention to it, he suggested that it would be better to go on practicing. The main character was approached by the commander and told that his name was Zheng Yong and he was a soldier of the artillery garrison of Dunhai City, he challenged the guy, he offered to compare all their skills in the 3km cross-country, the 400-meter hurdles and the pull-up. The students started talking among themselves, they couldn't believe that a soldier would compete with a freshman, some of them couldn't believe that it was worth getting so angry over something so insignificant. Lu Feng agreed he said that if he won, the instructor would give him a full exemption from training. He also asked for maximum marks for the subject for his girlfriends Yang Xuan and Ping Jiechi. The soldier was surprised because of the protagonist's willingness to trade a victory over one man for the full grade of two men plus exemption from training, he thought it was too much. The guy then suggested that the soldier take another man to help him, to make it fairer. Another soldier from the artillery regiment named Jia Long came over, he promised to show the protagonist the difference in skills. The students were outraged, they thought it was shameless that two instructors wanted to compete with a student together, they thought that people should not do that and it seemed very shameless. Lu Feng agreed, he only asked the soldier which one of them would go first, one of the instructors said that he wasn't done talking yet. The soldier asked that if the protagonist dared to challenge the two instructors alone, would he be able to accept the bet, the guy responded by telling him not to blabber and to say at once what he wanted without hesitation. The instructor replied strictly that if Lu Feng loses, he will take his papers and drop out of this university. The guy's girlfriends were very surprised at such words, they realized it was a big risk. Lu Feng told the instructors right away what would happen if they lost, he wanted to add his condition. The soldier replied that if they lost, they would agree to whatever terms he offered them, they would agree to release all three of them from training, the second instructor agreed. The guy turned to the other students and confirmed for them that the instructors had promised that after his victory, he and his girlfriends would be given an exemption from training, 
he also recalled that the soldiers would accept his any conditions. The girls confirmed that all the students had clearly heard the words of the protagonist, they promised that they would testify for him. The students shouted that they support the protagonist, even if he loses, they will admire him. The instructors stood silent, they realized that they were taking a huge risk and could not agree to it right away. Lu Feng clarified that he would not voice the last request right now, after his victory, he would make a surprise for the instructors, he asked them to give everyone a great performance. One of the soldiers told the guy to cut the crap, he suggested we get started. The competition began and everyone watched with great attention, on the treadmill, the instructor commanded that the protagonist and his rival should run a 3km cross-country race, on themselves they will carry two 15kg backpacks, the length of the stadium is 400 meters. to win, they must run 7, 5 laps. Seeing that the participants were ready, he told them to start, the run began, it was very important for each of the participants. Everyone was watching and cheering, the students saw that the main character was very fast, one of the students said that he couldn't catch up with Lu Feng without the extra weight, they wondered how the guy could run with a 30 kilograms weight. A school bully came up behind me, he said that on a 3 kilometer cross-country race it is dangerous to rush at the beginning of the distance, when the protagonist gets tired, he will lie on the earth and breathe heavily like a dog. After the first lap, the guy pulled away noticeably, the soldier said that the distance between them was 100 meters. Lu Feng further accelerated, after the second lap, the instructor said that the distance between them was 200 meters. By the third lap, the protagonist was able to overtake his rival by almost a lap, he was very angry. The students shouted words of encouragement to him, all the girls in his group cheered him on. The running soldier was doing his best to catch up with the guy, he was shouting that there was no way he was going to lose to that punk. The instructor would yell to the running soldier to keep the right rhythm or his stamina would plummet. Four minutes later, the boy's victory was already undisputed, he was able to win this contest. After the finish, the protagonist said he won this round and will continue to win for the glory of their division. The students shouted to him that he was very good, they confirmed that they supported him and called him the pride of their department. The main character's opponent was lying exhausted on earth, the guy told him to get up, for the competition was not over yet, he urged him to hurry up and complete the two remaining laps. The second soldier said that the runner was very tired and could not compete with the protagonist any further, he offered himself in place of the new rival, the soldier gave Lu Feng ten minutes of rest. The protagonist said confidently that he didn't need a rest, he asked what the next competition would be, the soldier told him to do 300 push-ups, whoever finishes first will win. The guy said they just upgraded the 3 km cross, now he suggested modernizing the push-ups, he suggested we do 150 push-ups on the right arm and 150 on the left arm, whoever finishes first wins. The soldier agreed, he added that one-arm push-ups should reach the forearm and be at a 90-degree angle. The competition has begun, the protagonist and his rival began push-ups carefully adhering to the rules. All the students were watching attentively, they cheered for the main character as before during the run. The push-ups continued, the instructor counted that the main hero was the first to do 150 push-ups with his left hand. The guy told his opponent not to rush to switch hands, he still had to do 7 push-ups with his left hand. The students asked the instructor how tired he was and if he needed a rest, they asked the guy if he wanted to wait for his opponent. Lu Feng told instructor Jia that he didn't need to continue since he had lost, for the protagonist, such an easy victory over him was no great achievement. The soldier said he had lost this round, he reminded them that they still had three more disciplines to compete in, the guy clarified what was next. Next was the 100m running distance, the winner was the one who finishes faster. The athletes warmed up and walked to the start line, the instructor commanded them to get ready and start running. From the very first steps, the protagonist rapidly ran forward, he immediately began to outpace his opponent. All the spectators were amazed at how fast Lu Feng ran, his victory was predictable. Students shouted that the protagonist won after he crossed the finish line. One of the school bullies asked his friend named Wei Zixuan if he had timed how long the main character ran for. The guy replied that Lu Feng was able to break the world record of running 100 meters in 8 seconds. One of the students heard this and was surprised that their colleague could break the world record, the other did not believe that such a thing was possible and that human capabilities had a limit and how the main character could reach such a level. One of the girls didn't believe that the guy could break the world record, 
she thought Lu Feng had just cheated and done something to the timer. Wei Zixuan said to himself that the protagonist was able to run 3 kilometers with a weight of 30 kilograms and then he also broke the world record, the record without weight is 7 minutes and 20 seconds, and the guy was able to run in 7, Wei Zixuan thought the stopwatch was broken. The protagonist told the instructor that it was past time to fight one last time in the abs discipline. Lu Feng told the students which of them were willing to step up and hold his feet for this contest. For this, his girlfriend Jiechi, who knew him, called out and said that she would help him. The abs pumping contest had begun, the guy pumped confidently, the girl held his legs. The instructor said the first person to do 500 times would win, he asked his colleague to hold his legs. The school bully, Zixuan, said that he could not watch the competition any further, Lu Feng has no weaknesses, in his opinion, the protagonist has more athletic ability than the instructors, another bully asked him if he was afraid of the protagonist. Zixuan called the second bully by Du Lu's name and said that after military training, he would challenge Lu Feng as president of the Sanda society, he added that the protagonist had won his respect with his performance, for this reason, he would not embarrass him today. The students shouted that the protagonist had already won because he had done 500 presses, his rival instructor had 100 more to go. After the victory, the boy thanked all his classmates for their support, he shared his victory with his classmate Ping Jiechi. His other girlfriend was angry, she thought that Lu Feng was just using this opportunity to hit on Ping Jiechi. The instructor tells the protagonist that they don't want to compete anymore, they give up, they agree to give him and his female classmates top grades and an exemption from teaching. The protagonist told the instructors not to forget their previous arrangement, the soldiers must tell everyone who instructed and targeted them and how much they were paid for it. A student journalist came up and said that the news about how a student defeated two instructors should be posted at once. The instructor reported that a school bully named Sun Ching Feng gave money to those causing trouble for the protagonist, for humiliating them in military training, they were to receive. Sun Ching Feng resented such an accusation and called it nonsense, he said that he was not such a person. The protagonist approached him and asked him if he really thought he was a good person, Sun Ching Feng replied that he was not afraid of the protagonist. Lu Feng hit him with all his might with his hand, the school bully fell unconscious to the ground. The students noticed that the fight had started again, they shouted that the main character had done it again. Jiechi's girlfriend said that this was the third time the protagonist had beaten this bully. The student said that the first time the guy beat Sun Ching Feng at the main gate of the university, the second time he was beaten by Lu Feng was during lunch when the bully brought a group of people with him. The students told Jiechi that they heard that when the protagonist arrived at the university, there were beautiful girls in the car with him, now it turned out that these beautiful girls were their classmates. The protagonist told Sun Ching Feng that he had beaten him for the third time today but not the last, Lu Feng added that his patience was limited and that the bully should not be seen again. The guy turned to his girlfriend Sherwen and Jiechi and told them that they were now exempt from training and had gotten maximum points, he suggested they find a place to rest. Jiechi happily said that she agreed that she really wanted to drink tea and milk. Her friend added that there was a great tea restaurant near the university, she suggested they all go. One of the students looking after the protagonist said that he took these beauties with him. He also told his friends to go and buy drinks and snacks for his classmates, when he becomes the head of the second class, he will make sure to make Lu Feng not look good in their eyes. The students called their leader Xiao Lu and said that they would do everything, one of them added that Lu Feng can only fight, as long as Xiao Lu uses his brain the protagonist will not be able to match him. A week later, the protagonist was walking with his girlfriend through the building of a hotel, she was practicing the oath of the head of the student group from a piece of paper. At that time, the guy got a very important message on his phone, it confirmed to him that the target had arrived. As the protagonist was leaving, he wished his girlfriend named Shivan good luck in the election for headman. In one of the rooms, a meeting then took place, Sun Jianye, the head of the Sonia family, greeted Mr. Fei's guest, he told him that if he knew he was coming in person, his grandson would greet him personally. Sun Jianye hoped that there would be cooperation between him and his guest. His guest said he didn't like the hypocritical politeness of his people from China, he proceeded to get rid of the Yang family, as a result, Sun Jianye would get half of their family's property in China. The guest's name was Pei Daojia, he was in charge of the Goyang group he said that he would need a secluded place, such as a factory building, he added that it was difficult for him to deal with Yang Ding, for this reason, 
he invited a group of mercenaries to China who would kill him in one blow. From the side came the voice of the main character, he said that China was a forbidden place for foreign mercenaries. All the people present got excited, they asked the main character who he was. Lu Feng said to pay Dao Jia's foreign boss that the latter was unpleasant to his eyes. The boss didn't like that kind of treatment, he asked him if he knew who he was talking to, the protagonist said of course he did, he thought the general manager would be fat. Pei Dao Jia ordered his underlings to beat Lu Feng and bring him to his knees, he'll see how talkative the guy is after that. The boss fighters are ready for a fight, they figured they would have no problem beating the protagonist. They gradually approached Lu Feng, he was ready to fight against them all. The boss said that he invited a martial arts master to deal with the young family bodyguard this time, now this master will deal with the protagonist first. Lu Feng said mysteriously that he is the bodyguard of the young family, now the boss can invite his master. A fighter in a kimono appeared, he called himself Pak Isheng and said he was ready to engage. The protagonist asked his opponent if he could beat him, Park Ishing replied that he would win if the guy didn't use unknown tricks. Lu Feng asked the fighter that if he didn't even know his tricks, how could he be sure of victory, the protagonist said he would give in a little. Puck decided to deliver a powerful leg kick, the guy immediately dodged it quickly and deftly. The guy said his opponent was very slow, he struck back with his hand on the enemy's neck. Puck swung his leg upward once more, the protagonist ducked very quickly and crouched down. Lu Feng delivered a lightning-fast kick to his opponent's face and he went down. The protagonist started kicking him, he yelled that he was giving him a chance to hit him. Then Sun Jianya's boss stood up and asked the protagonist what he wanted from him, the protagonist said that the boss should be a bit patriotic and how come he was conspiring with foreigners. The boss said it was all the protagonist's fault, Lu Feng often beat his grandson and insulted his family, so he is taking revenge for the family members, the guy replied that he would not help him with his family problems. The main character approached Boss Pei, he asked him to tell him something about himself and who his Gaojin group supports, he said he wouldn't answer anything because he was Korean. Lu Feng grabbed his shoulder and broke it, the boss gave a piercing scream, he was surprised by the guy's strength. The boss kept yelling that he wouldn't say anything since he was Korean, the protagonist kicked him in the leg. Boss Pei said that the protagonist is very violent, the guy reminded him to ask his men earlier to beat him up and throw him to the ground. Sun's boss came over, he said he can stop dealing with the young family, that said, his grandson's resentment is very great, the guy recalled the case of Hall Master Tian, Lu Feng pointed out that the top of the Sun family was being watched by the Goyang group. Leaving the guy said that Gaoyang groups will not treat Sun as equal partners, he also added that if Boss Pei doesn't say anything now, it doesn't matter, the guy promised to eradicate them all. The guy was in town when he got a phone call, the interlocutor asked him where he had disappeared for a long time, the guy replied that he had some business to attend to, the caller told him to come to Dongxing International Hotel immediately. There was an important event taking place outside the hotel among the students, it was the finalization of the selection of the head teacher. Lu Hao was the speaker, he thanked his classmates he invited everyone for a free drink, he also gave a speech to Ping Jiechi. One of the girls said she guessed it would happen, the headmaster brought a lot of roses, one of the students pointed out that Ping Jiechi was more preoccupied with Lu Feng. Jiechi was amazed to see many colors, she didn't even know what to say to Lu Hao. The guy on his knee told her that after he saw her there was no other place in his heart but for her. Suddenly, the noise of a racing car was heard from afar, it was the protagonist driving. He drove up to the hotel at high speed, the ceremony was stopped, the guests and participants were shocked. Getting out of his car the guy asked in amazement what idiot left the flowers in the driveway. The boy's arrival pleased Jiechi, the university headmaster was very annoyed. The girl asked the guy why he was gone so long, Lu Feng replied that he had been delayed, he offered to take the girl to lunch and promised to pay for everything. The surrounding girls laughed at the headman Lu Hao, they couldn't believe that he was still chasing Ping Jiechi. Suddenly, a white racing car pulled up to the hotel, these were Lu Hao's acquaintances. This was the arrival of Lu Hao's backup, they were to help the headman deal with Lu Feng. At this time the main character was sitting in a bar surrounded by girls they were celebrating and relaxing. The main character told one of his girlfriends that there were plenty of free seats around and she could choose any one she wanted, she told him that she would sit wherever she wanted. Lu Hao walked into the restaurant, he recommended his two friends to his classmates, one of them was Lin Yu and he was the general manager of Lin's real estate in Dunhai City, his second friend was Bai Yu, 
he was in charge of Chisha Logistics Group. The main character asked his girlfriend if these guys were really powerful, and she told him that they were a little known in town. Jiechi said with great consternation to the protagonist that Lu Hao is here again. The school headmaster approached Lu Feng and said that he should introduce him personally to his friends. The boy replied that he didn't want to take time away from his classmates and he wasn't interested in the head teacher's friends. The friends of the headman approached the protagonist and asked if he knew who he was talking to, they asked Lu Feng how many houses and cars he had in the city. The protagonist modestly replied that he had no houses or cars in Dunhai. The people around him laughed, they asked him if he had no way of earning money, why he was acting so brazenly. The main character pulled a card out of his pocket and said it was a black gold card from Centurion Bank, only world-class super-rich people have it. Everyone was surprised, they could not believe that a person without cars and houses could have such a bank card. Lu Hao approached the protagonist and said that his card looked like a fake, Oh Yu Feng pointed out that they would know if his card was genuine after using it. The girl asked the guy after dinner what he was up to, they left the restaurant. They headed to a luxury car store, someone asked if the protagonist could buy anything here, in this store, any car costs at least a million dollars, another student said that a black card from Centurion Bank is hard to get even if one is very rich. Lu Hao asked the main character why he stopped, the guy replied if his card turns out to be real then what will they do in return. Bai Ouyu said confidently that if the card is real, they will eat all their clothes. The guy told his girlfriend she could buy any car she liked and he would pay for it. The guy added that MS, Yang doesn't like to drive a car, so he decided to buy a car for Jiechi. At the same time, an important meeting was taking place in an ancient castle in Europe. A leader named Irene was sternly reprimanding her subordinates, she reminded them that they were supposed to deal with Falcon's mercenaries, and why they didn't know where they were. The girls said the boss would be back in a week after his vacation, that said, everyone was already very relaxed. A servant named Luo Tingfei came by, he said that their boss had just used the black card in Dunhai City. China. Irene asked him wondering if he was lying to her by any chance, Luo Tenfei confirmed that he is the head of the intelligence department, therefore, he knows all the news. After a little thought, the girl told one of her subordinates to book her a ticket to China right now. After a pause, Irene told him to book two tickets, she also asked him to call the devil's ghost. After successfully using the card, the protagonist turned to Lin and Bai and told them if they were ready to fulfill their promise. Lu Hao's friends asked the guy not to be so petty, they asked him to forget about the argument and let them go. The guy told them that if his card wasn't real, they wouldn't let him go, he proceeded to find another person to fulfill the dispute for them. Lu Hao guessed the protagonist's intention, he realized that his friends were pointing at him. The headman went to his friends and said they'd lost a bet, it had nothing to do with him, the friends reminded him that he had invited them to help him. Lu Feng told the headman's friends that if Lu Hao couldn't take the responsibility of setting them up, should they treat him as a friend. One of the friends yelled rudely at the headman for not even admitting his guilt. The friends beat up their leader, Lu Hao shouted to them that he was from the Lu family of the capital. These words of the headman struck the protagonist, he was very interested in his origin. He asked Lu Hao if he knew a person named Lu Yen, the headman thought for a while. Getting up from the ground the headman said confidently that Lu Yen is his elder brother. At the same moment, the protagonist kicked Lu Hao with all his might, he flew very far away. The force of the blow was such that the university headmaster simply flew out, knocking the door. The students were talking amongst themselves, they were checking with each other to see if everyone had heard the sound. Lu Feng pushed off with all his might from his seat and ran to finish off the headman. The lad was determined to get even with a relative of one of his enemies. The students were surprised after the main character pushed off the solid brick road, a big pothole was left there, someone shouted that it was urgent to stop Lu Feng. The boy was beating the school headmaster at the time, he shouted that he was wrong and asked him to stop hitting him. Jiechi ran up she asked the guy to stop so he wouldn't kill Lu Hao. The girl ran up and grabbed the protagonist from behind with her hands, it was the only way she could stop him. The main character finally stopped, he looked at the girl and asked if she was okay. Lu Feng added that he keeps his power under control, so the headman won't die. Lu Hao came to his senses and said it was just a joke, he asked the protagonist why he had beaten him so badly today. The guy answered him that he could blame himself and fate for having such a damned older brother. The guy went on to say that there's not a single good person in his family, 
but the headman's older brother deserves to die more than anyone else, Lu Hao resented how the protagonist had the right to curse his older brother. Lu Feng told the headman that if he didn't want to die early, he should quit school and return to the capital. The protagonist told the headman to send a message to Lu Yang that he would come to the capital to settle a score with him in six months. One of the female students ran up to Lu Feng and told him that at the university forum, Wei Zixuan challenged him to a fight. The students began to talk among themselves, they remembered that Wei Zixuan had come second in the university games last year, he is very strong and is a personal disciple of a martial arts master. The student showed the protagonist a smartphone with a message from the forum, the fight is organized today in the ring of the club. The student asked the guy if he would accept the challenge, Tout replied that he accepts the challenge, he will come to fight Wei Zixuan when he is free. The surrounding people rejoiced, they were certain unequivocally of Lu Feng's victory. At this time, Lu Hao was lying in a hospital in Dunhai City, he was being treated after being beaten by the protagonist. His subordinates stood next to the headman, Lu Hao said that he had moved to Deng Hai after everything that had happened to him in the capital to avoid the attention, he didn't expect to meet Lu Feng here. One of the subordinates said that Lu Feng doesn't pay attention to Lu's family, and he knows the headman's older brother from somewhere, the other subordinate suggested that Lu Hao tell his family. The headman said that if he couldn't solve this issue himself, how could he fight with his older brother for the position of heir after returning to the capital, he asked to be given a telephone. The subordinate gave the phone and asked who he was going to call. Lu Hao took the phone and told his subordinate that he shouldn't care about anything, he knows what he's doing. At the same time in the university building, the main character's girlfriend Jiechi was recalling the events of the previous evening. The girl wondered why she agreed to use her ID card to buy an expensive car, because of this, his classmates would consider the girl chasing money because of her expensive gift. In the end she decided that if Lu Feng wanted to court her, she would just go along with it. Her friend Sherwin came over, she asked Jiechi why she was still here. Shiver said that the main character was going to go and beat up a couple people. Just then Shivan said that they should hurry up so as not to miss the interesting picture. They approached the building of the sports club, it was already full of fans and they welcomed the protagonist. Lu Feng thanked everyone for coming through, he was happy that his duel had attracted so many people. One of the girls asked him if the guy would be okay after the fight, he replied that he was much stronger than she thought. The protagonist told his girlfriends to stay near the entrance he would go and play with Wei Zixuan himself. At that time, several fighters jumped down from the steps of the club, they wanted to attack the protagonist. Lu Feng protected the girls with himself and bounced to the side, he was surprised. The guy asked the fighters shouldn't there be a fair competition according to martial arts rules. The fighters replied that they just wanted to see if the guy was qualified to fight their president, their president could usually defeat the four of them at once, if Lu Feng can't do that, then he'd better not enter the ring. The guy laughed that they wanted to test him to see how skilled he was, he said he could beat four people at once, too. Lu Feng got into a stance and said that he could defeat them all with just one hand. 